After taking center stage during the campaign, housing will be on the minds of many Israelis who head to the polls on election day. This mother of two works as a project manager and considers herself to be middle class. Um, this is the bedroom. Uh... This small apartment in a squalid building on the outskirts of Tel Aviv is all she can afford to rent. My sister invites me all the time. She lives outside of Tel Aviv in a bigger, you know, uh, house. So we're invited. I, I can't invite her. I'm, I'm ashamed. I'm telling you the truth. I'm ashamed to invite friends. I'm ashamed to invite even my, you know, my sisters with their families. Israel's state controller recently released a scathing report on housing. Real estate prices have, on average, gone up 55 percent between 2008 and 2013. Tel Aviv University hosts the Affordable Housing Center. Its director says that the government has done nothing to address this crisis, which mainly affects the poorest. So if you are very, very rich, you pay about 20 percent of your income on housing. If you are poor, you will pay 60 and 70 percent of your household income on housing, which means that you will not be able to afford good food, health, education, and other things that we need in our lives. So this is a crisis. Back in 2011, Stav Shafir led Israel's biggest protests ever over social justice and housing. Today, she and others are campaigning for the center-left camp on the same issues. Yeah, three years ago, when we came here to protest against the housing crisis and against the policy of Netanyahu, we demanded Netanyahu to change his policies. Today, we want to replace Netanyahu. And while we were worrying about security, basically, we, we can't afford to live in an apartment. And that's another form of security. A stone's throw from the corporate towers of Tel Aviv lies a tent city that serves as a stark reminder of some of the ills that plague Israeli society. As the country's economy grows, so does the divide between its wealthy and its poor.